Item number nine, brackish water desalination plant project stabilization agreement. Turn it over to City Manager Ron Bernal. Thank you, Mayor Wright and City Council. Uh, this item before you tonight is um, the second time you've heard about this, um, this agreement. Uh, we brought the um, prospect of this before you several months ago and the council unanimously um, authorized uh, me to proceed with negotiations with um, with uh, the folks in the union. And so uh, the agreement that's before you tonight um, is a project stabilization agreement for our brackish water desalination plant that we're working hard to get under construction, hopefully in 2020. And uh, so um, our uh, attorney that's helped us work on the negotiations, Mike Lamming is here and, and John Blank, our public works director, will give you a little bit more information about the agreement. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Um, tonight we're looking for the, uh, to approve a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a project stabilization agreement. On April 11th, the city manager executed an agreement with Blaming Associates to prepare a labor stability study to determine whether a project labor agreement or a project stabilization agreement with local trade un unions would be beneficial. On June 12th, we came back and the City Council adopted a resolution accepting the Labor Stability Study and authorizing negotiations um, with the trade unions to execute a P PSA. Tonight, Mike Vam Blaming with Blaming & Associates is going to give us a short presentation um, and we'll then turn it over to you for any questions you might have. Mike. Thank you, Mr. Blank. Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, as has been described, um, we were authorized, uh, myself, to work with Mr. Bernal to develop a project stabilization agreement for the Brackish Water Desalination Plant Project. We developed a proposed agreement, and then we met with the Contra Costa Building and Construction Trades Councils to negotiate that agreement to tentative agreement, and that's what's before you tonight. In developing our proposed agreement and throughout the negotiations, we sought to achieve three objectives. First, the timely completion of the project. Second, construction labor efficiency. And third, an opportunity to provide employment opportunities for local area residents. Those provisions were contained in our proposal and we successfully negotiated that into the tentative agreement. I'd like to point out the specific provisions in the agreement. I believe you have a copy before you. Uh, where those sections, uh, how we accomplish those objectives and which sections those apply to. So in the timely completion of the project, we have a clearly delineated scope of construction, of construction craft work covered by the PSA. And that's in Article 2. Article 2 contains not only a description of the entire project, but those aspects of the project that are covered by the project stabilization agreement and also some specific exclusions from the project that are important to the completion of the project. Next, we have a no strike, no lockout provision with an expedited arbitra arbitration procedure. That's important for timely completion in the event that there is an issue where there is a strike or a lockout. There is a uh, already established procedure with already established arbitrators so that that issue, if it should come up, is handled in a very expeditious manner and work recommences. We have a provision for pre-job meetings. That's very important because before the work starts, this gives everybody uh, sort of a heads up as to what each contractor is going to do on the project, what their scope of work is, what their tentative craft assignments are, and how the work is to be prosecuted. That's usually a meeting where if there's going to be an issue, it's highlighted at that meeting. So it's solved before the work starts, which is, which is very important. Next, we have a provision for periodic labor management meetings. Again, an opportunity for communication as the construction work is prosecuted. The periodic meetings involve uh, the building trades, the general contractor, and any important subcontractors. The prosecution of the work is discussed. Any upcoming challenges that may uh, be uh, in front of the project are identified and how those challenges are going to be met are discussed and there's a plan to accomplish them. Next, there's an established agreed upon jurisdictional dispute resolution procedure. Now jurisdictional disputes, each craft has 
uh, if you will, traditional craft jurisdiction over the type of work each craft worker uh, performs. Uh, if there is a dispute between trades about which trade is the appropriate trade to perform that work, there is a procedure set forth in the agreement to handle any disagreement so it's prosecuted sort of off to the side while the work itself is performed on site. So everybody can see that going into it. If there is a dispute, that's identified and it's moved through the procedure contained in the agreement. Finally, uh, there's an established and agreed upon uh, dispute resolution procedure. So there is an established grievance procedure. So if there is a dispute between an employer and the employees about a provision of the agreement, there's already an established procedure on how to resolve that dispute ending in arbitration, which is a binding arbitration. So that's, uh, those are the elements in the agreement that go to address the issue of timely completion. Next, construction labor efficiency. There's two provisions that are important to this. One is the established referral procedures for the construction craft workers. So contractors needing to supplement their existing forces to prosecute the work, there's an established referral procedure within the agreement to get workers dispatched out to that contractor so that there's an adequate supply of skilled craft workers to perform the work. That's Article 14. Also, there are established common work rules applicable to the project work. So the project stabilization agreement serves to standardize certain work rules so all of the contractors working on the desalination project are working under the same set of rules. This agreement does incorporate by reference the local craft master agreements for each trade, but it sets forth a common set of rules so everybody's sort of in the boat rowing in the same direction on this project. Those are the elements that go to the issue of construction labor efficiency. Finally, employment opportunities for local area residents and military veterans. In uh, section 14.4, there's a priority for construction craft workers from the local area. So local area residents have a referral priority over all other workers on the out of work list. So a contractor can, when requesting workers from the applicable union, uh, can request local residents be dispatched first. And what we've done is we've set up a tier system. Tier one is the city of Antioch. Tier two is Eastern Contra Costa County. Tier three is all of Contra Costa County, and once those are exhausted, then it would go to an open call. So there is a way to pull people out of the regular dispatch procedure, which would be chronologically, to pull somebody out of order should they be a, a city of Antioch, eastern Contra Costa County, or Contra Costa County resident, and they can have a work opportunity on this project. That was important, that was expressed at the last meeting that we were here, and that was a negotiating objective. Uh, finally, uh, participation in the Helmets to Hard Hats program, which is a vehicle in which military veterans returning uh, from overseas, uh, if they want to get into the construction trades, the Helmets to Hard Hats program is, is, a, is a, uh, an established structure to match returning veterans with construction employment opportunities. Again, it's a, it's a source of, of craft workers and gives them a priority dispatch through the referral procedures. So that's, uh, those are the elements that go to employment opportunities for local area residents and military veterans. Um, I will say that in this project stabilization and the negotiation, this is a single project project stabilization agreement, which is similar to other municipalities in the Bay Area and in California that have no negotiated similar agreements. Uh, the city of Brentwood had two. One was for the Civic Center, one was for the library project. Uh, the city of San Luis Obispo uh, just negotiated a, a project specific project stabilization agreement for their water resource recovery project. Uh, again, this is a project specific PSA, not a programmatic project stabilization agreement. And by programmatic, I mean a, a, a project agreement, a project stabilization agreement that would cover um, public works projects over a certain threshold. And some of those exist in the community, but I want to draw a little bit of a distinction here. This, this agreement goes to just this specific project. Okay? I don't know if you have any questions, but... Uh, I believe we have quite a few public comments on this. So, Mike, think we'll do the public comments and then sure. we'll bring you back up for questions. Tom Hansen, followed by Dan Torres.
Mr. Mayor, council members, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. I'd like to thank your city manager, Mr. Blanding, for negotiating with us. It was a great pleasure to work with them. Uh, I'd like to thank you for taking this up tonight and working with the men and women in the trades and also your community to give them an opportunity to work on this great project. This is going to be an exciting project because how many desalination plants do you see in the western United States? So congratulations on this great project and allowing us to be part of it. And you're going to keep some people off of Highway 4 having to go over that hill for a while. So they really appreciate that too. So thank you very much for all your support. Thank you. Dan Torres followed by Bill Whitney. Hello again. Uh, good evening, Mayor Wright, council members, and city staff. My name is Dan Torres. I'm a business agent with Sprinkler Fitters, Local 483. I represent local men and women that install, test, and maintain life safety fire sprinkler systems in the San Francisco Bay Area. I am here to speak in favor of the project stabilization agreement for the Brackish Water Desalination Plant. Uh, having a project stabiliza stabilization agreement, say that 10 times, uh, would create opportunities for local men and women that are looking for careers in the building trades. The Sprinkler Fitters Local 43 has a California State Approved Apprenticeship Program. It is a joint labor management program. The signatory contractors are as invested into the program as a union because they want the very best trained men and women working on their projects. While apprentices are taking instruction during their apprenticeship, they also, they're, they're also earning community college credits so they may later continue their, their studies and earn an associate's degree. Best part about it, when the apprentice graduates, they have zero debt incurred from their apprenticeship and they'll have a skill they can take with them anywhere in the country. A BTJ, which is a Building Trades Journeyman card, is recognized throughout the United States and Canada and Ireland. When you possess that card, you know you have a skilled and trained journeyman on your hands. As I was reading the staff report submitted to you by John Blank, Public Works Director, and approved by the City Manager, Ron Bernal, it stated the project stabilization agreement is expected to have little, if any, effect on the total cost of the project. This is coming from the city staff. The Brackish Water Desalination Plant is a very complex system. The people that make up the Contra Costa building trades are some of the most highly skilled and trained men and women in the industry. We have a proven track record. Don't your constituents deserve to have the very best building, the Brackish Water Desalination Plant? I encourage you to move forward with the project stabilization agreement. Thank you for your time. Bill Whitney followed by Anthony Solak. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. My name is Bill Whitney. I'm with the Contra Costa Building Trades. The question before you tonight is, who do you want to have build this desal plant? And I'm here to ask for your vote to approve the agreement that was negotiated by Mr. Bernal, Mr. Vlamini, and the building trades. And should you do that, what you're going to get is you're going to get the best, most, highest, skill-trained workforce in the world. I'll say it again, in the world. And they're going to come and they're going to build you one heck of a desal plant. And they'll build it on budget, on time, and they'll build it safely. Now, we're highly skilled and highly trained. And as a result, we're, we're, well, we're well paid. And what you get is you get the best eight for eight in the world. We show up on time, ready to go to work, and we get the job done. What also happens is that that creates opportunities for the men and women that live in Antioch to live in Antioch because they are well paid. And, and I'm very proud of that, the fact that we provide those benefits and the ability for them to lurk, uh, work in the communities where they live. You don't see that very often. I'm uh, also very proud of the fact of uh, what was mentioned earlier is the helmets, the hard hats, how we look after our veterans and make sure that they have a place when they re-enter uh, the workforce after their uh, service to the country. Lastly, I want to touch on the apprenticeship program, which is very near and dear to my heart. I don't know if you realize this, but the men and women of the building trades voluntarily, voluntarily take money off of their paycheck and they put it into a trust fund, an ERISA trust fund that provides for the future education of the skilled and trained workcraft people in this country. And show me another industry that does that. Uh, uh, it is an opportunity for your men and women 
in this community to go to work and get skilled and trained. And the more PLAs we have out there, the more people we're going to need. And lastly, uh, I just like the individuals in the building trades to stand and be recognized that are here tonight. Just stand, please. And we have some men in the back there, if you can raise your hands. So we're committed to this project, and uh, we're asking for a yes vote. Thank you very much. Anthony Solak, followed by Tony Tiscarino. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council. Uh, I'm Anthony Solak. I serve as president of IBW Local 302, but moreover, I'm an Antioch resident and I was born in Antioch. You know, over the years, I've got to work on a couple projects in Antioch. I did the cogens that were built in Antioch, and recently I worked on eBART. And I can't tell you how nice it is to work at home. You know, when I was 26, I didn't mind driving over that hill every day and traffic was a lot less. At 56, I don't want to drive over that hill anymore. So that gives the opportunity of our people to be able to work at home. This project also gives us an opportunity to make a living wage, health and welfare benefits, and a pension plan. Medical is a very important thing that a lot of people don't have. <coughs> it's nice to be able to go to the doctor and be able to work at home and to be able to invest in our retirement. So I encourage you to approve this agreement. Thank you. Tony Tiscarino followed by Glenn Lavelle, Laval. Good evening, uh, Mayor Wright, members of the council. First, uh, before I get started, I want to personally congratulate uh, Mr. Smith on your tenure here with, uh, with Antioch now. That, that's, that's great. And I also want to thank Derek for uh, your service. Uh, I had an opportunity to work with you in, during my six years of tenure off and on, and I do appreciate the work that, uh, that you did for the city. Uh, with that said, being a council member for six years and having an opportunity to work with you and a previous administration, I've been very proud and uh, enthusiastic that we've been able to work together and come to agreement on a lot of different things, even though we have different personalities and different philosophies at times, but we've always voted any resolution ordinance that was going to better our city of Antioch, and that's one thing I've been proud of. And as you know, when I was sitting where Mr. Thorpe was sitting, uh, I was truly passionate about this particular issue. Uh, I'm very proud of the men and women of labor who do a very fine job in, in California. Uh, even though I'm not part of the building trades per se, I did come through an apprenticeship program, and uh, it was a very good uh, state certified program, so I kind of am an adopted son to the building trades, and I try to make sure that they're aware of that. But uh, I do come in favor and support of the PSA to move forward uh, with our desal plant, and I'm hoping that uh, uh, my colleagues will do the same. I think it's very important. Uh, Mr. Vlaming did lay out a lot of particulars uh, on, on the contract. To me, it's a very structured contract. It protects not only the city of Antioch, but it protects our workers. And that's something I've always been proud of, is you always want to protect your working base. You want to, always want to protect the integrity of the workforce. So that's something that uh, I'll continue to fight for. And uh, this is something that I'm proud that I was part of it in the first uh, voting stages, and I'm hoping that we'll continue to do the same moving forward. So thank you. Thank you. Glenn Laval. Good evening, Council. My name is Glenn Laval. I'm representative for Iron Workers Local 378, uh, which represents a variety of members who live here in the city of Antioch. I'm also speaking in favor of the project stabilization agreement for this desalination plant. Um, as has been pretty well and previously noted, this project will uphold uh, dignified, safe, and skilled working conditions that are not only in the best interest of completing this project, but are the very conditions that the public deserves for these kinds of investments and improvements in our infrastructure. The local hire provisions take the vital measures of allowing the funds put into this project to be concentrated all the more to the benefit of our local residents, uh, serving to enable residents to secure a living wage through this job. The prevailing wages allow people a civilized standard of living where it targeted to the cost of living of this region. Furthermore, there are taxpayer money protections in this given the 
labor peace provisions as well as the measures taken for collaboration and communication between labor and management. Altogether, we are looking at the most skilled labor possible to provide here through the world-class apprenticeship programs uh, completed, as noted before, debt-free for residents and other workers that go through this program. Ultimately, with these safe, dignified, and skilled work conditions, um, we're proud to support this measure this evening and strongly encourage the support. Thank you, Council. Thank you. This item is now before Council. Comments or questions? Question, Mayor Pro Tem Mott. Uh, just regarding, you had said, um, as far as local hire, is, is it can or will? Will that be the, the first priority when it comes to um, pulling labor from the local market? You said that expanded out, but so you said can, I just, or will that be the process? Good. Great question. So the provisions in the agreement, without those provisions, there's no ability to take somebody out of order. So this provision in the agreement basically provides that a contractor calling for workers from the hall mm -hmm. to meet a manpower request have the opportunity to employ local residents out of order. So part of the answer to your question is, education of contractors performing work on this project need to know that because of the provision in the project stabilization agreement it's in the interest of the city that they employ as many local area residents as possible and by educating them in that then it becomes a will employ local residents we put it in as a goal because you can't put it in as a mandatory percentage or number so you have a target you educate the contractors that when they call for folks coming out of the hall to request that they be a local area resident so the person working at the at the applicable local goes through the list and sorts it by city of Antioch, by eastern Contra Costa County by Contra Costa County before they go to the chronological list so it, it's sort of a, a complex answer to a, a straightforward question. Part of it depends on education. The provision's in here. Without this, you couldn't do it. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll just make a comment. Um, I think that's a critical part of this because we have, um, we want local hire and we want those dollars spent back in our community. I mean, that's part of the, what's so powerful about a project labor agreement. Um, and I've seen that firsthand, um, being one of the first spearheading the first project labor agreement we ever had with um, Antioch Unified School District when I was sat on the school board there in our renovation of the Antioch High School. And I, I saw firsthand the difference it made in having, um, having done two bond measures, uh, the first one without a PLA and the second one with one. It was stark, the difference of the quality of work um, less change orders um, and just um, significant difference and seeing actually uh, people that actually graduated at Antioch High School that were back working on the school they came from and um, loved doing that making a difference there so um, I'm in favor of this. Before I turn over uh, Council Member Overtuck I just project stabilization agreement is great we're going to need your help to make sure we get through CEQA and we get the money that we need to build it because a project stabilization agreement without the money to build it doesn't give you guys the jobs. So help us to get there because we definitely want to see this project come to, come to fruition and get you guys working here local. So help us all the way through. Council Member Overtime. With that, we've been working on it uh, for four years now, huh, Tony? So it's, it's, you can just see it coming to fruition. It's more and more exciting. So I can't wait for this to start. So with that, I'm going to make a motion the City Council adopt a resolution authorizing the City Manager or his designee to execute a project stabilization agreement and direct staff to include the agreement in the bid documents for the construction of the brackish water desalination plant. <coughs> Motion by Council Member Ogerchuk, second by Council Member Thorpe. Please cast your votes. There are five affirmative votes. Okay. 
Moving on to item number five, public hearing, ordinance of the City Council of the City of Antioch repealing and reenacting chapter 14-1.